This morning we took in a couple of members, new members in the church. Um, Caitlin Arnold and Caleb Morgan uh, joined the church today. And, and uh, one of the kind of fits along with where we're going in the, the scripture today in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Because one of the reasons that you join the church, one of the, the, uh, the certainly one of the fundamental uh, reasons for joining in the church, is that it, it gives you that place where you can exercise your spiritual gift. You can utilize your spiritual gift for the benefit of the kingdom, for the work of the Lord. And, and, and so they make that commitment, and we make a commitment to, to partner with them, uh, to help them in accomplishing that. But it is within that, that church fellowship that your spiritual gift is to be exercised. And so we come to 1 Corinthians chapter 12, and remember that the majority of 1 Corinthians was written to a church that was having problems. And so pretty much every chapter has to do with addressing a problem that exists. And so we find that one of the problems that existed in the church at Corinth was this, the means by which they were exercising their spiritual gifts. Somehow they were, they were getting that wrong also. Now, it doesn't get real specific into what the reason is, but there's some kind of clues that we find in the, in the text today. Uh, but, but for whatever reason, it wasn't, it wasn't being exercised. They were not being exercised in a way that was consistent with what God's requirement was. And so, so he addresses that. And we're going to look at that today in terms of our, our spiritual gifts. And my, my hope is that we were able to maybe discern, to, to tell uh, when, when we are, are, as the Corinthians were, kind of getting off base in regards to our thoughts and our actions regarding our spiritual gifts. But also, not simply stopping there, but also in a positive side of that, what do we do? How do, how do we pursue? How do we exercise our spiritual gifts? Here, here's the thing that most people have a, 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 a struggle with, and it is that they think, and this would be the general congregant in the churches, they don't think that they have a spiritual gift. Or they would say this, well, I probably do, but I haven't found it yet. I don't know what it is. And, and so my hope is that we can maybe give some guidance that would lead you to a place where you would understand and be able to exercise the spiritual gifts that, that God has given you. And so beginning there in verse 1, the 1 Corinthians chapter 12, it says, Now concerning spiritual gifts, brothers, I do not want you to be uninformed. Now he gets to the heart of what becomes the problem with, our, with spiritual gifts. And it has to do with our understanding. He says, you're uninformed. So what does that mean? It means when it came to spiritual gifts, they didn't have a good fundamental understanding of it. They didn't have a biblical understanding of it. So, so that leads us to a question. Where, 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 would, where would your understanding come from? If, if my understanding of spiritual gifts does not come from God's word, then where does it come from? Well, I would challenge us in this area that all of us, uh, all of us have some kind of understanding about spiritual giftedness that is in some way been informed by our experience. The church that you were raised in, well, if it tends to be a, a more charismatic, Pentecostal church, you, you would have a little fundamentally different understanding of spiritual giftedness than if you came from a, a, a Lutheran church. You're, you're, there, there's this kind of continuum, there's this broad spectrum, and we fall at various places, and part of that has been informed by our experience. This is what I experienced, and so this is what I understand about spiritual giftedness. And I think that has informed a lot of us in, in our understanding of, of spiritual giftedness. And so, so the question then comes, as he says, I don't want you to be uninformed, then the question is, well, what has informed me? What has led me to believe what I believe about spiritual gifts in the, in the, in the church? And uh, tradition, experience, what other people that I respect have said about it, maybe my favorite, my favorite preacher, all of those things have shaped us and formed us. But he says, I don't want you to be uninformed. And so if the problem today is you don't have a really good understanding of spiritual giftedness, Paul would say to you, I don't want you to be uninformed, and, and, and he's going to proceed to inform you regarding spiritual giftedness. He says, you know that when you were pagans, you were led astray to mute idols, however you were led. Now, here becomes a big problem when it comes to spiritual giftedness. He points out this, that in the past, you were misled. 
You, you actually pursued after idols in the past. Now, I, I think the reason that he's going to bring that up is to, to help us to see that we are all easily misled. And, and when it comes to spiritual giftedness, we, spiritual gifts, we're in an area here where it's easily misled. That we can easily make, make pro, uh, poor choices regarding spiritual giftedness. Now, if you remember a few weeks ago, Paul warned them this. He said, speaking of idol worship and chasing idols, he really indicated this, that that was a place that demons occupied. He said, if you are worshiping an idol, that there is no other God. So it's not like you're worshiping another God. And you may comfort yourself with that. That, that this idol that I worship, there really isn't a God there. There's only one God. There's the God creator of the universe. That's the only God. And so I don't have to worry about worshiping an all, a false God. But, but what he says is that in those places, that's where the demons reside. And so you might, you might think that, that, that I'm, I'm good here, that this idol that I'm pursuing is no problem, but he warns us that that becomes the area of demons. And so when it comes to spiritual giftedness, we have to be careful because we can head off into what is demon area in the way that we exercise spiritual gifts or our understanding of spiritual gifts. So he cautions them, look, you were misled in the past. You could be misled again. And I think that's good advice for all of us. Understanding, maybe looking back at our life and thinking about those times where I kind of I, I kind of was deceived. You can be deceived. And, and that leading us to be cautious in this area. He says, therefore, I want you to understand that no one speaking in the Spirit of God ever says Jesus is accursed. And no, <clears throat> and no one can say Jesus is Lord except in the Holy Spirit. So he begins to lay down some kind of proof of whether or not something is emerged from a spiritual gift. And, and, he, and he lays out this, and I, I think we would look at this and maybe question it, because he says this, you, you, you can't really, in the Spirit of God, you can't say anything negative about Jesus. In, in, and, and if you don't have the Spirit of God, you, you aren't going to say anything positive about Jesus. But I think the general principle he's saying here is this, that any time that we are operating within a, uh, the, the spiritual gifts, a gift of the Spirit, that in some way Christ is going to be elevated. Christ is going to somehow be elevated. And if that spiritual gift is not promoting Jesus, if it's diminishing who Christ is, then that is not a spiritual gift. That is not coming from God himself. And so the way that somebody handles the, 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 the person of Jesus is going to be indicative of the reality or false nature of a spiritual gift. And so he says in verse 4, <clears throat> Now there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. So he's saying this, that, that when it comes to spiritual giftedness, there is a whole bunch of them. Now, he's going to give us a list here in just a little bit, but it's not a comprehensive list. Now, the reason I know it's not a comprehensive list is elsewhere in Scripture he has other things listed. So right here, he's going to list a, a handful of spiritual gifts. But elsewhere in Scripture, he names some that aren't named here. So this is not comprehensive. This isn't complete, but it is a list of some of the spiritual gifts. So there's this variety. There's many different spiritual gifts. And so indicating that, that there isn't just one spiritual gift that we're all supposed to be pursuing, but, but many gifts that are uh, available to um, to the world. And, and there are varieties of service, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is of the same God who empowers them all in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. So here comes the part that maybe is going to make us uncomfortable. To each, that means every one of us. And there's elsewhere in Scripture that it corroborates that. that. That to every one of us have been in some way gifted God. God has given you a spiritual gift, even if you cannot recognize it, it's present in your life today. And, and here's the thing, here's the thing, it will be for the common good. It will result in good to the rest of the church. Another kind of uh, indicator of whether or not we're operating in a spirit that comes from God or a spirit of something apart from God is that it should benefit 
the world, the church in general. That there's going to be a general benefit to the church because of the spirit, the, the work, uh, the, 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 uh, the, uh, the uh, gift that you have been given. And so verse 8 then says, For to one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom. So he begins to list a number of, of gifts. And to another the utterance of knowledge according to the same Spirit. To another faith by the same Spirit. To another gifts of healing by the one Spirit. To another the working of miracles. To another prophecy. To another, the ability to distinguish between spirits. To another, the various kinds of tongues. To another, the interpretation of tongues. And so he lists these, spirit, these gifts. Now, I'm not going to go into these today. We're not going to look at them individually as we walk through uh, these three chapters because chapter 12 through chapter 14 is basically about spiritual gifts. And so we'll touch on this a little later. We're going to look today not so much at the specifics of this, but the, the purpose of the gifts and, and what we need to be cautious about when it comes to spiritual gifts. So 